Minnie McLuhan, our wonderful executive officer from Loveland. Thank you, Steve, and thank you, Sandra. Our next topic is the economic landscape forecast and recovery. Your area chambers of commerce have been an essential resource for the business community. We've been at the forefront of this pandemic, providing business advocacy, working with local, state, and federal organizations to support local businesses of all sizes, and providing information, resources, and assistance to help our members survive this unprecedented economic hit. And now it's time to begin to look toward recovery. I have the great pleasure of working with this team over the last nine months to consider what does reigniting our economy look like. So help me welcome David May, the President and CEO of the Fort Collins Area Chamber of Commerce, Josh Burks, Economic Health Director for the City of Fort Collins, and Adam Crow, Economic Manager for Larimer County. So welcome David, Josh, and Adam, and I think David, you're gonna take it over first. A little bit of audio problem, David. You sounded much younger <laughs> than what you normally would. Well, if this was a comic relief segment, we would be getting a thousand hits right now. Mindy, maybe one of uh, one of the other of us can jump in for the time being and get us started. Josh, go right ahead. It looks like uh, David may be trying to uh, rejoin and correct his audio issue. Mindy, thank you so much. I want to echo your sentiment. Um, your regional partners in economic development have been working um, since the very beginning of this particular crisis to work together on response. Uh, and we're excited today to tell you about how we're looking to the future. I see David's just rejoined, so I'll give him a chance again to try to kick us off. Go ahead, David. Thank you, Josh. Hopefully I don't have the chip point, uh, chipmunk voice again. Um, it's good to have, be with all of you today, and uh, sorry for that uh, technical glitch. So um, the, um, Josh, do you have control of the screen? I think Ann does, so go ahead. Okay. And All right. So um, obviously uh, 2020 um, has been an interesting year. It's been a bit of a, a, uh, a stinker, to say the least. And uh, I think uh, we, we joke about uh, 2020 in a lot of ways and, and look forward to, to seeing us get by it. Um, but it does, have, it does have some economic implications for us that we, we uh, do want to talk with you about. So um, economic situation, um, as, you, as you look at this next slide, uh, we spent some time trying to understand. So as Josh was saying, and as Mindy said in her opening comments, uh, we've re we work well together in Northern Colorado and the economic development leaders uh, in the region have been uh, focused really since May at uh, looking at the economy, trying to understand what is happening and then uh, looking forward to uh, begin to address some of the issues. So we want to give you just a quick sample. We, we don't want to dwell on the, on the data today in, in any great detail, but these are 11 of the indicators that we have been uh, looking at. And you can see the trend line over on the right-hand side as far as, as what is happening with uh, initial unemployment claims and, and uh, continued claims, et cetera. And it's a mix. Um, when you, when you see some of the charts we're going to share with you, um, obviously it was a pretty significant hit when you look at the left-hand side of some of these charts back in the early part of the year. You see what then ha happened in April and in, uh, March, April, and May, and then there's been a recovery. But when you look at the, at the right-hand side of these charts, what you'll see is we're not back to where we, we started the year. So I'm going to hand this over to uh, Adam, and he's going to talk about what some of the unemployment data looks like. 
Great, thank you very much, David. Um, would you like me to share my screen or just, oh, never mind. thank you, Anne. So our initial unemployment claims, I think there's probably no surprise to folks who have lived through the last eight months or so that we had very elevated unemployment claims starting in mid-March and they just continued to grow through April and then really didn't start to dwindle until the beginning of the summer. Um, but when you look at our, our initial claims that you see here, it's really telling you those initial folks that are our first time claimants. So it's not continuations, which we'll look at later. Um, but moving on to the next slide, uh, one of the most um, important indicators that we watch in the, in the world of workforce and employment is the continued claim. So these are the folks who are staying on unemployment rather than moving off to employment for other reasons. And this has been particularly interesting to see in the pandemic because some of the reasons that people aren't going back to employment at the same rates are different now. So obviously we know that not all employers were able to open at the same pace or get back to their same capacity. So that's still part of, of what we're managing here. But also we do know that there's fear of pandemic. There's people who have conditions that don't allow them to go back to work health wise. And then there's a lot of childcare um, challenges that are happening right now. And that's part of why we continue to be eight or 9% higher when it comes to our continued claims um, year over year. So next slide, please. All right, so unemployment rate, again, um, as we've talked about on the first couple of slides, uh, you, can, you can definitely understand why our unemployment rate remains high. But that spike on the top slide on the right-hand corner really illustrates um, the, steep, uh, the steep climb that unemployment had in the, the first part of the year at the beginning of the, the um, second quarter. Um, end of the first quarter. And uh, you can see that there's uh, the rates of how it has maintained and the rate that it has stayed higher. You know, we're looking at 2.5% in Larimer County and 2.7% um, um, uh, as a low moving all the way up to 10%. And now we're about in the middle. We haven't quite gotten all the way back down to where we were previously. So working towards that, and you can see on the next slide, um, that part of the reason that um, we're working toward, well, actually, I'm gonna pause there. Um, this kind of our labor force and some reasons, it's a slight reason why our unemployment rate has dipped a bit is that there are few people who, uh, fewer people who are looking for employment right now. We have seen some individuals and you can see there that it's down um, regionally by about 3.2% our labor force. So these are the people who are vying for those jobs and people who are in, um, working towards um, finding employment and or are employed. And of course, we have seen some people have to drop out. Again, health concerns has been part of that for some individuals. Childcare has been uh, another aspect of it. And when you look at those concerns when it comes to our, our um, additional responsibilities at home, women do make up a larger proportion than we would have seen in the past um, due to the, the specifics of COVID-19. All right, so our next slide is the one I was referencing earlier, and this is really our job postings. So our job postings, for obvious reasons, dipped very low uh, at, the, at the first part of the pandemic, and they are starting to climb back. But it's also important to note that we have had some mainstays in our economy, specifically construction and manufacturing, which continue to not only hire but maintain um, levels of employment. And we are now seeing healthcare come back in and do some more hiring. So along with other businesses and some of our, our other essential employers opening back up at greater amounts, we're seeing our job postings climb. Um, it is a little bit harder for some employers to find employees. So. Um, uh, we are working with them diligently to, to look at what hiring people in a pandemic looks like because it is a little different. Um, okay, and then I think uh, at this point we switch back over to David. So what you're seeing with this chart um, is that local merchant sales fell very dramatically in that April, March and April timeframe. Um, you're seeing this gradual recovery that's taken place then through the spring um, and in the summer into the fall. Sales in Larimer County uh, fell 14% below uh, where we were in January and in Weld County, 6% lower. On this next slide, um, you're seeing um, retail sales and hospitality in uh, Larimer County bottomed out in April. Um, and now those sales are actually surpassing where we were in 2019 and Weld County bottomed out in April and um, has remained below those levels. 
And then on this last slide uh, is around um, hotel occupancy. And uh, what you're seeing here is um, a pretty significant decline. Um, you can see SS Park, Port Collins, Greeley, Longmont, Loveland um, on these charts. And um, so very dramatic fall off uh, in the spring. And you can see we're still performing uh, significantly below the 2019 level. So um, I'm going to turn it back over to Adam. And what we wanted to do is have him very quickly uh, talk about, we wanted to paint this picture for you so you could see, and, and uh, you, know, you know this has happened, but we wanted to put it actually in a, in a form that uh, uh, dramatically showed the impact from uh, early in the spring to now. But we did respond and we're in the, in the recovery and the reopening phase. We wanted him to talk a little bit about that part of it. Sure, thank you, David. So as we look at uh, response initially, um, we had done a lot of work over the last three, four years as regional partners, chambers, economic developers, municipalities, um, small business development centers to build strong linkages and strong partnerships. So we were able to respond quickly. And one of the first things that we recognized is that our business community needed access to resources, whether they be financial or information around unemployment or information around how to stay safe and current health orders, um, which led to us creating a one-stop shop, which was the uh, nocorecovers.com. Encourage you all to take a look at that webpage. It, it's updated daily and, and very informative. We also um, soon after realized that personal protective equipment was gonna be very necessary towards businesses reopening. Um, so taking a leadership role in setting up a marketplace for PPE and the NOCO safety supply became very important. And again, these are a lot of local distributors as well as a lot of local companies that are finding PPE there. And then um, almost all of our municipalities, including the city of Fort Collins, has focused on how can we bring a lot of our commerce back to our local businesses and make sure that uh, we are supporting them. And so the 4-4 Collins and other initiatives have, have definitely risen up. And if we move to our next slide, one of the other things that we started to learn, and this was uh, really towards the, the springtime, is that in a pandemic, personal behaviors have an impact on our economy and the, and the capacity levels that businesses are, are able to be open. So to, to benefit our business community, we knew that we needed to develop some very clear and consistent and easy to digest information about what it means to keep yourself safe, your family safe, your coworkers safe, and your businesses open. And that's where Keep NoCo Open came out. And some of you may have seen masks and other um, materials that are out there in the world, and it's all over social media, and we encourage you, encourage you to share that. But this is a partnership between all the municipalities and um, other NOCO economic development partners, as well as our health officials in Northern Colorado. So this continues to evolve as the pandemic does so that we are up to date in the communication we're providing. And we will see this messaging expand soon into other forms of media, so watch for that. And um, please access this information on uh, nocorecovers.com and share it yourselves. Thank you. Well, thank you, Adam and David, for giving us uh, a quick tour there of what's happened in our economy and how we've been working regionally to really respond. I'd like to change the uh, direction for a moment and focus on what your uh, chambers, regional economic development professionals, municipal economic development professionals are doing to really start to look ahead. Um, it's important to shift our focus uh, at some point. Uh, if you go ahead to the next slide from uh, you know the, the response uh, activities that we've been heavily engaged in. What you see now is a fairly standard sort of um, crisis or you know economic downturn sort of cycle uh, graphic. Um, and where we've been, I think, stuck for, not stuck, but where we've been occupying our time for the last nine months has been primarily in response and then what we've called pre-recovery, which is the beginnings of the inflection point to really start rebuilding the economy. And I think that uh, the data that both David and Adam highlighted show that we're now on our way into that recovery activity where the um, economic um, levels are beginning to return to what they were previously. And now it's about looking ahead into what the new normal will be and understanding what uh, are both the opportunities and the challenges of that. So your economic development professionals got together and 
I decided to first focus on key principles for success in any plan to help encourage economic recovery. And you see those on the screen now, and I'm not going to touch on all of them, but I want to hit on a couple because they are extremely important. The first, reinstilling confidence has been um, a real focal point in our conversations. Um, commerce is following confidence in a crisis like the one we're seeing, which has not been precipitated by underlying economic conditions, but rather by an outside influence, in this case, a virus that has resulted in a number of public health restrictions impacting our economy. And so how do you help both the consumer and the employee feel confident again, fully engaging in the economy? And I think David will talk about that a little bit more and some of the limiting effects of having low confidence uh, have on the overall economy. That leads us to our next principle, which is very important, which is that the work of developing a recovery plan is both practical and symbolic. It's as important that we focus on what needs to be done and how to do it well to rebuild our economy as it is to demonstrate uh, as a business community and as economic development professionals that we are engaged in this space and focused on doing the right things to help rebuild that economy. And where I'll stop is uh, with the third principle there, which is that we all have a vested interest. Businesses have a vested interest in reopening to be able to return to previous revenue levels and adjust their business models and perhaps diversify revenue models. The government has an interest in getting back open because it relies on the economic activity that the business community generates to create the tax revenue that it turns around and provides service to its citizens. And as you can see, there are a number of other principles that help guide this process and hopefully lead us to a plan that ultimately allows us to understand both how to meet the challenges of this particular economic crisis, as well as what opportunities might be in there. And I think if we go to the last slide here, uh, the, the group has focused on a process to build this plan that uh, hopefully you'll begin to start seeing. We started uh, just yesterday with a series of focus groups targeting specific industries and groups of businesses uh, across both Larimer and Weld County to understand what's happening for them and what they're seeing. So this is really a multi-phase process to lead us to a strong recovery plan. The first phase, as it should be in just about any strategic effort, is to understand and analyze what's taking place today. Uh, that work, as you see, was completed. David and Adam went over the data analysis earlier. That's continued to be refined, and once it's um, fully vetted and ready for public consumption, I'm sure it will be made available on NOCO Recovers as well as a number of other sites. We're now in phase two, which is business engagement, understanding from you, the business community yourself, what's happening for you, ground truthing the data that we have analyzed and beginning to put that all together. And that really forms the discovery process of a strategic plan and leads us then what to, will be phase three, which is strategy development. What are the tactics, strategies, and objectives that we wanna pursue in a plan uh, we hope to have that completed by the end of Q1 next year and then translate all of that into an actual action item plan for phase four, which should be done in the April-May timeframe. Last, I want to talk about an example of the kind of things on the next slide that um, will be tied into this. Um, as I'm sure you are all doing in your own business, you're sort of oscillating between developing tactics and strategizing what to do next. Um, we recently uh, were able to put together a uh, Pivot Larimer County program, which is a tactic to help businesses, in essence, engage in what most startup business which businesses would go through, which is kind of an accelerator course to evaluate their current business model and see how they might be able to adapt to what is going to likely be uh, a long tail recovery that is influenced by this pandemic still for many months to come and also will be probably different consumer habits and different business models that will be successful uh, into the next um, strong recovery and economic growth cycle. So with that, I'm gonna hand it back to David to close us out. Very good, Josh, thank you. Um, so to bring this home, um, we have six task forces of various 
flavors that are working on projects. Uh, one of them, uh, it's a project that Josh just mentioned, which is the Pivot Program. Um, another thing we're focused on right now, which gets us into the phase three of the, of the uh, process that uh, Josh described is an economic plan. And so um, we're in, that, in the final stages of picking a consultant. You see the, the proposals that are here in front of us. Um, on the next slide, what you're seeing is some of the questions we're asking. We're spending time using, using uh, this crisis to really say, what's the current situation here? What are the national trends? Um, where's the two county region headed as far as uh, impacts from the COVID? Uh, are there some new opportunities that come from this crisis that we could focus on? Uh, and then how do we get there? So what specifically, once we understand this situation, what specifically can we do as a region to replace the lost uh, regional domestic product and the, uh, the jobs that we've lost in our region? So that's the focus for us in the, in the near term. Uh, we'll hopefully be making a decision this week. Um, in the meantime, we're in this, in this weird economy. It's not fully functioning. And you see lots of disruption that's taken place uh, in the various business models. CSU, childcare was mentioned earlier. Um, manufacturers is a mixed blessing in terms of, of their supply chains, but there may be some great opportunities here for us. Residential real estate is going to be fine. Uh, we just don't have enough housing in our, in our region. So um, in terms of pricing, that's not going to be an issue. Um, office is disrupted for the short term, and we don't know what the long-term impacts are going to be. And then um, government revenues, at least for the foreseeable future, are, are going to be impacted adversely. So longer-term economy, um, you know, prior to COVID, we, we saw... Um, you know, a strong economy here. Uh, some of the economic drivers uh, have been damaged when you look at Colorado State University, uh, retail, restaurants, lodging, uh, healthcare, oil and gas due primarily to state regulations, manufacturing. Um, it, what we're trying to figure out now is what's the long-term implication. Some of these uh, sectors will bounce back uh, nicely. Others, it's going to take some uh, focus and dedicated work over a number of years. To, um, to see those come around. Um, Kiplinger letter um, said that the economy should recover all of its COVID-19 related losses by the uh, third quarter of 2021, uh, which is quicker than expected, uh, but it's still a sign that we have a, a deep hole to get out of. So our path forward is to uh, be data-driven, be very intentional, our economic planning and then work together as a region. And obviously, um, as you can see from this quote, it's not always what happens to you, it's, it's uh, what you do about it. And, um, and so I think that's the attitude you're seeing with our folks. And, and I wanna thank Adam and uh, Josh uh, for your work. And I wanna turn this now over to our, our next uh, panel. Thank you all. <laughs>